Fuji film, Fuji film, Fuji film. One side of me likes you, the other side doesn't. I really, really, really want to like the XS10, and in some ways, I kind of like it. But unfortunately, it still continues to not offer things that I really would have liked to see. Like on memory recording, for example. It does offer a deeper grip, so there's that. It also offers a, a flip out screen, so that's really good as well. But still, no on memory recording. That's a shame. Let's talk about it. Alright guys, so in this video I'm going to be talking about the new Fujifilm XS10. I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on it and uh, how I see it playing out in the current markets. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. So I have already right here the page for the, the camera here on B&H Photo. So the Fujifilm XS10, this is supposed to be basically a mini X-T4. Uh, now for the naming scheme, they went with a different name, it's, it's no longer the, this is pretty much just uh, an hypothetical XT40, but I guess they, they wanted to di differentiate itself a little bit. So now they're calling it the XS line. Um, this camera is actually pretty interesting, actually. It's basically like a, a mini XT4 uh, combined with, with uh, an XH1, pretty much. Um, the form factor is kind of a mini XH1, actually. Now, uh, what I really like about this camera is the ergonomics. Now, uh, this camera has a very big trip, as you can see here. So they have added a very big deep grip, which I really like. I don't, I don't, I, I don't like the XT3 or XT4 because they, they don't offer a very deep grip. This camera solves that problem, just like the XH1. This camera offers a very deep grip, which is pretty good because that that is going to balance better with with uh, bigger lenses. And I know people have been asking for this for a lot of time now. A lot of people, a lot of people asked for the, a deep grip, and and Fujifilm finally finally delivered it. So. That's pretty great. Um, they also uh, offer uh, a flip out screen with this camera. So there's also a flip out screen with this camera, which is not here uh, on, on B&H, but they, they offer a flip out screen just like you get with the X-T4. So that's going to be good for vlogging and if you want to record yourself and stuff like that. So yeah, um, the camera itself does not really seem to be that crippled. I mean, it now offers a, um, um, a PASM switch, a dial. Which, which I, I saw some people not really liking. Uh, most people prefer the, the dedicated dials for the shutter speed and the aperture. Uh, for me, it's not really uh, that important because my Nikon camera has the same dial as well, the, P, the PASM. So I don't really, I don't really uh, see much of a benefit over the, the shutter dials or the aperture dials anyway. So yeah, it now offers a, a dedicated ISO button. So that's great. I prefer to have a dedicated ISO button instead of a, a, a dial, so that's nice, I guess. And overall, the ergonomics seem to be uh, pretty, pretty decent, I guess. Um, I don't know, I don't know how the camera actually is because I, I haven't, I haven't held it yet. So I, I, I want to, ha to, to have it in my hand to see how the, 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 the grip feels because the XH1, I, I, it's kind of not that bad, but then again, it is very big and heavy, so. It's, it's not a, it's not as great as economically as the G9, for example, the Panasonic G9. Uh, it's kind of like the GH5. The, the 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 grip area feels very very heavy. So even though it's a, even even though it's a, it has a deep grip, it still feels very heavy in the deep in the grip area. So it's not really that comfortable that comfortable in my opinion. But yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna go over the specs. So this camera pretty much uses the same sensor as the G the XC4. So you get uh, a 20, 26 megapixel APS-C backside illuminated sensor, so it's it's gonna it's gonna be pretty good for the light. This APS-C sensor is pretty good. It's actually the it's actually the best mirrorless APS-C sensor I, I believe in the market right now when it comes to resolution and the dynamic range and, and low light performance. So that's pretty good. You get a pretty good sensor with this camera. It also has the same X X X processor for image image as the XT4. Uh, it also has the, the in-body image stabilization, so this is pretty great. You get IBIS with this camera. Now, it's this, the IBIS is a little bit smaller than the XT4, so it's, it's, it's not going to be the same level as the XT4. But then again, for $1,000, you, you get an IBIS camera, so that's pretty great. Having IBIS with this camera, that's pretty, that's pretty good. 
Um, you also get the Cinema 4K and the Ultra HD 4K up to 30p. You don't get 60p, of course, that was to be expected because this camera is $1,000, so you can have it all in $1,000 camera. Uh, you also have Full HD up to 240 frames per second, so that's pretty good. You get to 240 frames per second for $1,000, that's pretty, pretty good in my opinion. Most cameras top out at 120p, but this camera offers Full HD up to 240p, so that's pretty, pretty good. And uh, yeah, I mean, this camera for the price seems to be pretty good. It's $1,000, you get a pretty good sensor. You also have IBIS as well. You get the good color sign from Fujifilm. You also have Full HD up to 240 frames per second. Now, you don't get 4, 4K 60, but you do get 4K 30, which I, which I expect to be pretty good because the Fuji X-T4 4K is, is good from what I've seen. So it, it, this camera is, is gonna have good 4K, so there's that. You also get continuous shooting up to 8 frames per second mechanical shutter and 20 frames per second electronic or rather up to 30 frames per second mechanical if, if, uh, if you use electronic shutter so that's pretty good as well if you want to do um, high frame, frame rate shooting so that's pretty great uh, now this camera does not, does not offer 10 bit like the X-T4 or the X-T3 but then again for the price you can have it all you have 4208 bit internally so there's that but you do get 10 bit externally though. You, you have 422 10 bit externally. If you use an Atom Engineer 5, you can get 422 10 bit, so that's pretty good. Uh, now, unfortunately, like I said, this camera has a limited recording, unfortunately. It has a limited 2959 limit, unfortunately, so that's pretty so that's pretty bad in my opinion. I really I really wish Fujifilm would stop with this with this ridiculous limit. Like I said in the past already, there's no point anymore for this recording limit. This was because of a, this was because of a, a, an European tax law, but that law has already been obsolete. That, that law has already expired last year, which is why the new Sony cameras like the 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 A7 or rather the A7R4, the A6600, the 6100 offer a limited recording, but because the European tax law has already been obsolete, so it's it's really it's really a shame that Fujifilm still continue, still continue to offer limited recording. I wish this camera would offer a limited recording, but unfortunately it still has a 2959 limit, so if you want to do long recording sessions, be aware of that, that this camera still has a 30 minute limit. Uh, like I was saying, it has the 10 bit 422 external, so you you, you can get the, an Anonymous Ninja 5 and have 10 bit video 422, and you also have the, the unlimited recording, so there's that. Yeah, at least there's a, at least there's an, an incentive in that you get a more recording as well as the 10 bit 422 if you buy an, an Arrow Engine 5 and then again if you really think about it this camera is $1000 it's it's quite a lot cheaper than the XT4 which is 1700 to $1800 so if you buy this camera and the and the Atomos Ninja 5 you're going to be at the same price point of the XT4 and you get a more recording which you don't get with the XT4 you also have the 422 10 bit as well so if you if you really look into it, it might be a better buy compared to the XT4. Yes, you do not have the 4K 60, but you do have uh, unlimited recording and 42 10 bit for the same price, pretty much. So yeah, if you really look into there, there's it's not really that bad of a deal. Now, unfortunately, this camera uses um, the older battery, so the battery life is not going to be as good as the XT4, and because it has the IBIS system as well. It's gonna be even worse than uh, the the XT3, so I don't expect the battery life to be that great for photography or for video. But then again, you can buy um, a battery grip and still come out cheaper than the XT4, and you can have three batteries inside as well. So when you think about it, for the price, this camera is not really that bad of a deal. I just wish it, it had a little recording, but unfortunately it doesn't. But overall, it seems to be a pretty great camera. So. Props to Fujifilm for, for releasing this camera at this price point. For $1,000 you do get a pretty good deal here. It's a much better deal in my opinion than the, the Sony A6100. The autofocus is not really as good as the Sony, of course. But then again, the, the photo quality, the, the color signs and the, the ergonomics are going to be better on this camera. Especially with, with that new battery, uh, or should I say, the new deep grip. It's going to be much better ergonomics compared to the Sony. And for one thousand dollars, you really you really can't go wrong. Now, if you if you if you need a little more recording, I will still I will still go with the Sony A sixty four hundred or the sixty one hundred or the sixty six hundred. But then again, if you don't mind having an Atomos Ninja five 
attached to the camera. This camera will be the one I would buy. I would buy this camera with an Anonymous Ninja 5 if you want to have on the recording. But uh, yeah, aside from that, this camera is pretty, is pretty good. Definitely one of the best releases so far this year. Uh, overall, this camera is a pretty good deal for the price, $1,000. It's gonna be bundled with uh, the 18-55 f2.8 to 4, which is a pretty good kit lens, and also the 16 to 80 f4, which is not really that great in my opinion for video, but then again for the for the range that you get, it's a pretty good lens and much better than the 16 to 50 you get with the Sony or the 15 to 45 that you get with the, the Canon M50. So yeah, overall the Fujifilm XS10 is a pretty good, nice release. Aside from the limited recording, like aside from the from the limited recording, like I said, if you don't mind having the 30 minute limit, this is pretty much the best deal right now when it comes to APS-C mirrorless cameras, and I will definitely recommend it if you're looking for a a photo centric camera. If you want to have a better video, I, I would still go for. If you want to have a, a video camera, actually, I would still go for the Sony probably because of the better autofocus and the the limited recording. But if you don't mind uh, having an Anonymous Ninja 5 or, or, or any other recorder, I would go with this camera because you get so much more for, with this camera. You get uh, um, better ergonomics, better screen resolution. You also get a better EVF, better ergonomics. You get so much more compared to the Sony's and the, and the Canons. So yeah, overall, Fujifilm, good release. I just wish you added a little recording. Now, they might add a little recording via firmware update, but I, I I don't really see it. I think they're gonna reserve that for the, the XH2 in 2021. That camera I could see having a little recording, the XH2, because that camera is gonna be their flagship for the X uh, APS-C system. So yeah, that's it guys. So that was my take on the Fujifilm XS10. Overall for $1,000, this is a pretty great camera. If you don't mind the, the, the limited recording, unfortunately. I wish this camera had a number recording, it doesn't, so it does not, not really appeal to me. Uh, I, I, I will be looking forward to the XH2 next year, probably, is when they're gonna release close to the Olympics. Uh, so, yeah, thank you guys for watching the video. If you want to see more, you can hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to stay up to date when I when I'm release new videos like this. Leave a like, comment, or dislike what you thought. If you want to support me and want to see more, you can visit the channel and hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. So, I'm Ronald Mega, signing out. And Fujifilm, please, end on the recording in your, in your next camera. I really want the XH2 to have on the recording. If this camera had on the recording, I would actually probably buy it. Uh, but it, it does not have on the recording, so unfortunately I cannot buy it because I really need a camera with on the recording. So, the search for the perfect camera is still gonna continue, unfortunately. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching, stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hola Mega, signing out.